Hey guys, so I haven't done a wrap-up of the things that I've read since March. That leaves April, May, June, July, and now August to catch you up on. So here's what I'm going to do. Well, first of all, August will have its own separate wrap-up because at the time of filming this, the month isn't over yet. As for April, May, June, and July, I'm going to be doing a combined wrap-up for all of that time over four separate videos, and this is part one. Basically, the reason I'm doing this is because I don't necessarily feel that the most uh, efficient way of doing this particular wrap-up is to do it in the actual exact order I read everything, mostly because I actually read several books in several series split up throughout those months. So I'll be talking about the series that I've read, whether I've finished them or not, as a whole series, instead of individually. Over the course of April, May, June, and July, basically since the last video I made telling you what I've read, I got through 48 books, not including August. I've already read 20 things in August, so each part of this all-encompassing wrap-up will have 12 books in it, including whatever amount I've read in whatever series that I might be talking about in each one. Some books or series I may talk about longer than others. It really just kind of depends on when I read them, what I felt about them, what I remember about them, etc. I mean, I'm covering four months worth of readings so that you're kind of expected. I'm filming all four parts right now, though, so you shouldn't have to wait for them for too long. I'll upload them one day after the other. Got it? Alright, let's jump right into the first part of this four month wrap up. In the last wrap up that I did in March, I told you that I read the first book in the Old Man's War series by John Scalzi. And now I've also read the second and third books in that series, The Ghost Brigades and The Last Colony. I enjoyed the first book for sure, but the second book in the series was better for me personally. It follows a mostly different set of characters from the first book and a different kind of story. Unlike the first book, which follows John Perry joining an army of elders, this book follows a special force unit from that army called the Ghost Brigades, but for the place in which it pulls its soldiers is quite a bit different. I actually thought this book just raised a lot more interesting questions than the first and just expanded on this universe that Scalzi built in the first book really well. The third book, The Last Colony, brings John Perry back into the mix and sort of throws him into a new place that he's never been to before, and we learn even more about the sci-fi universe, about the characters and about the direction that the series is going in, and I really enjoy Scalzi's sense of humor most of the time and think the story we're following is just a whole lot of fun. I like the characters, the technology, the writing, and the plot for the most part. It isn't perfect, but it's fun. Also in my last wrap up from March, I mentioned that I read Soulless by Gail Carriger, which is the first book in the Parasol Protector series. Since then, I've also read numbers two through four, which is Changeless, Blameless, and Heartless. I really like the series a lot. I really, really love the characters, writing and sense of humor. I absolutely love the audiobook for the series. The narrator is perfect. Basically, it's vampires and werewolves and things like that set in Victorian England. Characters struggle to be proper in a world where they must deal with some questionable company. The main character, Alexia, is a preternatural, meaning she has no soul. When she touches a werewolf or a vampire or something like that, they become normal again. When she touches like the body of someone dead whose ghost still haunts some place, she exorcises that person and their soul leaves forever. That kind of thing. Basically, she's seen as a threat to supernatural beings, but she lives in a world full of them and interacts with them on a daily basis. She's a really great character. All the characters in this book are awesome, and her story is a lot of fun to follow. Each book brings something new to the story or introduces some new thing for Alexia to deal with. I gave each of these four stars and enjoy them all equally and really recommend the series to anyone. Even if you're not really sure if you like it, it's kind of surprising how good it is. Trust me, really, really fun and really enjoyable. I also read some more Rerio books by Michael J. Sullivan, the first two Rerio Chronicles that are out right now, The Crown Tower and The Rose and the Thorn. I seriously enjoy this story so much. Rerio Revelations started off just, you know, okay, it was fun. The first bind up that the stores was pretty good, but not great. But as the series went on, and as we got to the last bind up, I was just in love with this story. I love the two main characters, Hadrian and Royce, and the world this takes place in. Very well imagined places and plot and backstories. And these Rerio Chronicles books follows those backstories for Hadrian and Royce, which I absolutely love reading so much. To see how they've grown from their first adventures together to the adventures in Rerio Revelations is just really, really awesome. Hadrian and Royce are basically great friends and very loyal companions when we meet them in Theft of Swords. But before all that, in The Crown Tower, first Rerio Chronicles book, we get to see when they first met and they absolutely hate each other and it's really great to see the progression there. 
Technically, we already know how their story turned out if you've read Revelations before Chronicles, but it's still really fun to see these backstories that were only ever hinted at in Revelations. Crown Tower was pretty straightforward, not the best writing or plot development or world building or anything in the Riri series by far, but still a whole lot of fun. The Rose and the Thorn definitely picks it up though, and we begin to see the backstories of even more characters from the main series, which was so awesome. One character in particular it was just really awesome to see. I don't want to spoil anything, but basically it wasn't a character I was really expecting to see or to learn more about. He has his part in the main series for sure, but in this book he really shines. And so far I'm just really loving these Rear Chronicles books and I cannot wait for the next one. And I also listened to two short stories set within the Rear series, Professional Integrity and The Jester. Basically just little stories about Hadrian and Royce. Probably not for someone who hasn't read all of the other books first, like I really suggest reading both the series already first. I really enjoy Professional Integrity more. It's both are free on Audible and really fun to listen to. If you've read the others, go get them. They're read by the same guy who reads the rest of the series, Tim Gerard Reynolds, who's definitely my favorite audiobook narrator so far. I've listened to every Riri book and really can't imagine the series without him. Sometime within those months, I also read Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones, and I listened to the audiobook, which was absolutely the right choice, I think. Really enjoyed the narration a lot. I've actually never seen the movie, and I have been told that it's a bit different from the book, so I'm kind of glad that I got to read the book first and experience it first. And I, I really love this style of writing, of storytelling. Very whimsical and very fun and enjoyable. Really like the main character, Sophie, who's a little girl turned into an old woman at the beginning of the book. She obviously wants to be cured and goes to see the wizard Hal in his moon castle. And we follow her, Hal, Hal's assistant Michael, and a fire and demon named Calcifer on this really fun adventure to find a lost prince. Calcifer is probably my favorite character, and I just really love the dyna dynamic between all of the characters. They all do a few unexpected things at times and always keep it interesting and this was just really fun, really well written, like I said, very whimsical and I gave it four stars. Next is Hyperion by Dan Simmons. This was just a crazy ride. Lots of fun, really intriguing. I believe I gave it a four and a half stars and it follows several characters as they journey to the world of Hyperion and it begins with them all together, a priest, a poet, a scholar, among others, as they start to kind of get to know one another. They don't know each other, and they each have their own individual reason for being on Hyperion. So throughout the book, we basically follow each character's personal story of how they got to where they are now, with kind of little sections of all of them together in the present again after each story is told. At first, you're not really given much about what's going on or who these people are or what Hyperion is and what's happening there, but as each individual story kind of unfolds, you get a deeper and deeper look into the world building and the plot and each character. And I really I really love this way of storytelling. It really helps to develop each character individually and help to kind of give a full and complete sense of each character and what their motives are, what they're looking for, what's already happened to them, etc. Some stories stood out more than others. Of course, that's only natural with a book like this. You can't help but connect or just enjoy some of the viewpoints over others, but overall I thought every character was interesting, every bit of plot and world building we get from each section really well with one another and really just helped to get a feel for this weird sci-fi world. And the writing is just great too and it may be one of my favorite sci-fi books that I've read so far. Really, really looking forward to the rest of the series and honestly looking back on this book and talking about it right now, I can't believe I haven't read at least the second one yet. The last book that I'll talk about in this part is Children of the Sky by Werner Vinge. This is the third book in the Zones of Thought series, the first being a Fire Upon the Deep and the second being Demons in the Sky. And I enjoyed those first two books immensely, easily favorites, and I talked about each of them at length in other wrap-up videos. They've got huge scope, incorporate several different places and peoples and storylines, and they give this sort of great sense of vastness of the universe while still showing the importance of individual stories and people and worlds within that vastness. And this one was still good, but it didn't really have that. It returns to something we left off on in the first book. The second book follows something basically completely different from the first book, but this third book goes back to the first. And the story is pretty straightforward. Definitely interesting still and fun and with a lot of good ideas expanding even more on a world we get a pretty good look at in the first book, but just not quite as good as the others. And I gave it four stars, whereas I gave the other two five stars. Still enjoy the characters, the writing, the world building, and all that, but it just didn't quite live up. I still recommend meeting the whole series, though, if you haven't yet. Very well written sci-fi story. 
Anyway, that's all for part one of this wrap-up. Part two should be coming to you sometime tomorrow, in which I'll talk about 12 more books that I've read since April. If you've read anything that I talked about in this video, have any comments on anything, please let me know down below. I'm doing my best to get better at replying to comments, and I appreciate all of your comments so much, and absolutely love seeing them. I'll see you guys in part two, and thank you so much for watching.